Hello everyone, my name is Raghavan Prasad and welcome to my channel. In the previous video lecture on velocity triangle of a turbine, you have learned how to draw a velocity triangle of an impulse steam turbine. This video is the continuation of the previous video. In this video lecture, you will learn about another way of drawing the exit velocity triangle, flow directions and combined velocity triangle along with some equations to find out force and power produced by the turbine. This is the final velocity triangle used in the previous video lecture and I have redrawn it like this. In order to combine two velocity triangles, important thing to be concentrated on is the position of the triangles, which means either the triangle must stand on its base or on its apex. In this figure, the inlet velocity triangle is standing on its base, whereas the outlet triangle is standing on its apex. So either we have to invert input triangle or the output triangle in order to combine them. The combined triangle standing on its base is easy to visualize, memorize and solve as compared to inverted combined triangle. However, inverted combined triangle also 100% correct and give the same solution to the problem. Here I invert the outlet triangle by keeping the inlet triangle as it is so that the combined triangle stands on its base. I am keeping the outlet triangle aside from the blade exit point to avoid any kind of confusion. In the previous exit velocity triangle, the velocity branches into V2, VR2 and VF2 and the blade position is at the apex of the triangle. So there is no confusion with the blade position since it always remains at apex point. But in this case, all three velocities start at three different points and then combine at a single point. So what is the position of the blade? Which velocity is related to the blade movement? Yes, it is the relative velocity Vr2, which will affect the blade movement and it is inclined at an angle beta2. After drawing Vr2 at beta2 angle, we can show the existing velocity V2 at alpha2 angle and it is less than Vr2 and it can be drawn from the apex of the triangle like this. This exit velocity V2 can be divided into two components of velocity. One is the horizontal component V cos alpha which is also called as the whirling velocity Vw2 at the outlet and the second component is vertical component V sin alpha which is also called as flow velocity Vf2 at the outlet. U2 is shown between V2 and Vr2. Flow direction the importance of flow direction is to calculate forces associated with the flow like axial force, tangential force, radial force, etc. Because these forces drives the turbine wheel and hence the turbine rotates and produces power. I use both the velocity triangles here to explain the flow direction. In both the cases, inlet triangles are same. The nozzle is placed at the left extreme corner from which the fluid leaves at V1 velocity. This velocity V1 split into Vw1 and Vf1 and moves the blade at U1 velocity. So all the velocities V1, Vr1, Vf1, Vw1 and U1 directions are shown towards the apex point. In type 1 exit triangle, the exit velocity splits into various velocities and they move from apex towards the base corner of the triangle. In type 2 triangle, all velocities move from base corner towards the apex point of the triangle. The same concept of velocity triangles can be understood in another way. You can see a 3D diagram of turbine at the left top corner of the page and its front view has shown at the center. Turbine rotates with an average angular velocity omega in the direction of the blade movement. Inlet and exit velocity triangles can be shown for blades like this. Inlet velocity triangle is shown at the left side and the outlet velocity triangle shown at the right side of the blade, which means the fluid is flowing from left to the right through this turbine. The flow velocities Vf1 and Vf2 are parallel to the axis of the wheel and perpendicular to the blade movement and are in the same direction in both the cases. 
that is from left to right vw1 vw2 u1 and u2 are perpendicular to the wheel axis but parallel to the blade direction u1 is in the direction of blade movement whereas u2 is in the opposite direction similarly vw1 is in the direction of blade movement but vw2 is in the opposite direction in velocity triangles since blade moves with same velocity u1 is equal to u2 and hence there is no problem with the direction of the blade speed u1 and u2 in velocity triangles whirl velocities vw1 and vw2 both are responsible for the blade movement and hence both will be added in case of turbines even though they are in the opposite directions addition of vw1 and vw2 is called as the total whirling velocity and it is multiplied by the mass flow rate of the steam to find out tangential force acting on the turbine blade this tangential force multiplied by the blade velocity u will give the power produced by the turbine flow velocity vf1 is the vertical component of initial velocity at the inlet and it does no work on the blade because it is perpendicular to the direction of blade movement this component of initial velocity is only responsible for the flow through the turbine in axial direction here both velocity triangles are kept side by side and we can notice that height of both velocity triangles are same that means vf1 is equal to vf2 in case of symmetrical blades since blade angles beta1 is equal to beta2 and if vr1 is equal to vr2 then the axial thrust will be zero and hence height of the triangles will be same for symmetric blade profile with varying relative velocity the flow velocities will be different at the inlet flow velocity would be higher as compared to outlet the difference between the vf1 and vf2 multiplied by the mass of the steam will give the axial force or thrust in axial direction combined velocity triangle for combining velocity triangles i would like to use velocity triangles with vf1 is greater than vf2 as in actual case for symmetric blade profile the relative velocity at the entry will be higher than exit relative velocity so obviously vf1 will be larger than vf2 combining of velocity triangles start with a common baseline u which is blade velocity common for both velocity triangles on this line we can place inlet velocity triangle on the right side and the outlet velocity triangle on the left side method of drawing both the triangles on a common base line u is same as that of drawing individual triangles flow directions for the combined velocity triangles are as shown in the figure step by step i hope you can understand this